Hello and welcome to another video in the series Server Side Swift using Vapor. So in the last few videos we have created many model classes in our periodic table project. So in this video I'll show you how to set up a parent-child relationship between the two models. And uh, you'll learn the purpose of these relationships and how to model them in a Vapor framework and how to use them with our roots. So first off talking about uh, parent-child relationships, now parent-child relationships describe a relationship where one model has the ownership of one or more models and uh, these are also known as one-to-one -one or many-to-one -one relationships. For instance, if you model the relationship between people and pets, one person can have one or more pets, a pet can only ever have one owner. So in our periodic table app, we'll uh, implement this by creating users and uh, users would be the one who could create new elements in the periodic table. So the users and the periodic table will have a parent-child relationship because only one periodic table element can be created by a single user and a single user can create many elements. So let's open up terminal and we can change the directory to our periodic table project. And uh, then we can create a new users model file and a new users controller file. So we'll use the touch command of paper to create the new files. Also, let's make sure our Docker application is up and running and we can start the Docker container again. If you want to see my video on uh, how we can configure our PostgreSQL database, you can check out the link below. And now we can just open up our Xcode project. So now in our Xcode file, we can just go to users.swift file. And here we can create our class to define the user. So in our user class, we have given this uh, an ID, which is a universally unique ID, a name and a username, which are both string properties. Next, we can make our user model conform to Fluence model by adding the following at the end of the line. So now our user class will inherit the property of Postgres equals UUID model. And we can add the rest of the extensions. And finally, we can open up our configure.swift file. And after this line, we can just add another migration here. So you might get this error here. So, and uh, this is easily fixable. We can just go to users.swift file and uh, we can add the type alias database here. So this will define the PostgreSQL database inside the model. And now when we try to build this again, so this error has been resolved now. Now let's go to our users controller.swift file and we can define our users controller model. Now if you haven't watched the last video of this whole series, which was about controllers, I highly recommend you guys check that out and uh, in that video I've explained in there in depth what all uh, models we are conforming to and how everything works. So make sure you check that out before watching this video. So here we'll just create a new roots group like we did in the previous video. And now we can just define a new create handler. So 
so this function will create a, a post route and uh, this will take the user's credential as its parameters and it will return a future user object and uh, inside the function we are saving this particular user in our database and now finally we can open up our roots.swift file and here just like we did in the previous video we can just create a controller so now we have registered our user controller in our roots.swift file and we can go back to our users controller.swift file and create a few more handlers So by now you should already know what this function will do if you guys have been following along throughout the whole series. This function will create a get root which will return a list of all the data which are present inside our database. And this get handler will create a get request which will return the user which is specified in the request parameter. So we can register all of these in our roots group. So now we can uh, build and run our application and uh, test out that uh, this user collection is working. So we can open up the Postman app and we can just copy this address. We can add our endpoints which were API and users and let's first create a user. So in the body we can give the parameters which are name and username. Sorry, I forgot to add a comma here and we can send this request again. So as you can see, our user has been created and uh, this has returned a universally unique identification for this. So let's create a few more us users. And we can also try out the get all response. Great, so our app is running, running successfully. So let's see how we can set up the relationship that we talked about in the beginning of this video. So we can open up periodic table.swift and inside our periodic table class, we can add a new variable which is user ID. So this user ID will belong to the user that creates the element. So this will add a property of type user.id to the model. And uh, this is a type alias defined by Postgres SQL UUI model, which resolved to the universally unique ID. So now we're not keeping this as an optional property. So every periodic table element must have a user ID in its class and we can add the new parameter here as well and uh, that's all you need to do to set up the relationship now before we run our application we need to reset the database because we have changed the models uh, Fluent already has the periodic table migration, but the table has a new column now. So to add the new column to the table, we must delete the database so Fluent will run the migrations again. So we can stop the application and open up terminal again. And we can enter this command in the terminal to stop our database. and we can remove this particular container using the rm function 
and now we can set up the docker database again So again, if you guys haven't checked out my previous video on how we can configure a database, I highly recommend you check that out so that all of these steps are clear to you. So now we can check that this particular database is running by docker ps command. Great, so our database is running and now we can recreate our Xcode project using Vapor Xcode-Y. And now let's go ahead and build and run the application. So now we can copy this address and open up the Postman app again and we can create a new user. So let's copy the ID that this new user has and now we can run the element. Set the request as post and in the body we can add the chemical name and the chemical symbol and the new parameter which was the user id so let's set up the user id first and we can paste the user id that we had copied from here add the symbol And we can add the chemical name of the element and now we have created a new element here and uh, this element now has the user ID of the user that we had created now let's go back to our Xcode project and in the elements controller.swift file in the update function we can just add the new property So this will update the periodic tables property with the new values provided in the request. So now the users and the elements are linked with the parent child relationship. However, this isn't very really useful until we can query these relationships. So once again, Fluent makes this very easy. So let's open up the periodic table.swift file and we can add, the, add an extension at the end of the file. So what this does is add a computed property to the periodic table class to get the user object of the elements owner and uh, this returns a fluent generic type which is a parent and uh, then we use the parent function to retrieve the parent. So this takes the key path of the user reference on the acronym which is the user id here and uh, let's create a new handler for this new property in the elements controller.swift file so at the end of the file we can create a new handler to get the user of this particular element So this root handler will create a new root named uh, user get user handler and uh, which returns a future user and uh, this line with would and this line will fetch the parameter which is mentioned in the user's request and unwrap the return future and finally we will we'll use the new computed property created above to get the elements owner so let's register this new root to our root collection. So this will connect the get request 
to API slash element slash the parameter here, which is the periodic table's unique ID. And finally, the user. So this will be the path of our get request. So let's go ahead and run our application and uh, test out this new get request that we have made. And we can copy this path. And we can add our endpoints, which is API element one, which is the ID of the element and slash user. And we can send this request. So as you can see, our user has been returned from the element API. So back to our Xcode file. So we have made a new API request that which will fetch the owner of the element. So similarly, we can create an API which will fetch all the elements a particular user has entered. So for that, let's go to user.swift file and we can create a new extension here. So same as we created the extension in the periodic table class, we'll create one here. And uh, what this will do is add the computed property to user to get the user's elements. And we are using the generic type children function, which will retrieve all the children of this user. So let's open up user controller and uh, we can create our new handler here. So this will create our get request which will return all the children that this particular user has. And finally we can add this handler to our roots group. So we can go ahead and build our application. And we can test this out in the Postman app. We can add the endpoints here, which are slash API slash users slash. Uh, so here we have to add the user's ID, which we can copy from the user that we had previously created. And slash element. And we can send this request. So as you can see, this has returned all the elements that this particular user had created. So we can stop this over here and that's it for this video. We implemented the parent-child relationship in Vapor using Fluent and this allowed us to start creating complex relationship between our models and the database. Thank you guys for watching.